Hey, it's Mike from Music Ministry 101. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to teach SATB parts to a new choir. So let's say you just started directing and someone said, hey, I think you should be the director. And you were like, what? Me? Sure, I guess I could be the director. And you want to teach your choir how to sing in harmony. Well, here's the video for you. Um, so first of all, here's what you need. You need people that can carry a tune. And I know that sounds silly for a choir, <laughs> but I've seen it all. And so you really need people that can carry a tune because if you're going to see, sing in harmony, basically what harmony is, is when you have two or more notes going at the same time. So one person, let's say, is singing a C, the other person is singing an E, and those things are happening at the same time. So I say you need to carry a tune because both of those people, uh, let's say Mary and Susan, Mary and Susan have to be able to hold their note and not get distracted by the other person. And that's how you get harmony to work. So here's a basic way you could start using solfege. This is really, really basic, okay? You could have one group sing a scale from one to eight. So they're gonna go like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So step one is you get the whole choir to do that. Okay, you get them all to sing that number scale going up and down. Now what you do is you're gonna set two teams. So you're gonna break the room in half basically. So if you have a choir of 10, you might do five and five. And you're gonna have team one is gonna start that song and team two is gonna come in um, after the first two notes. So basically they're gonna start one, two, and then these, these people start one, two, three, so as you can see, this group is on three and this group is on five. So you have harmony going up and down that scale. Now it's kind of cool the way that the, the math works out, so to speak. When one group goes up to the top, excuse me, I gotta sneeze. <coughs> Oof. There's gonna be a point where the first group, the first group is over here, the first group is on eight and then this group is on six. And so as they come back down and as they go up, they're both going to meet on seven. And what you could tell your choir is to listen for that moment when everybody is singing seven at the same time. So believe it or not, you can keep going with this and do it in three parts or four parts. And you can just keep adding parts. So you could have team one go one, two, and then add team two, one, two, and then one, two, one, two. So you have these big chords that are going up and down. Really, really a cool way to start singing in harmony. Now the next thing to try is a simple song that's around. So you could do row, row, row your boat and get them to sing it in a round. Um, it's a very similar idea to the scale, but using actual notes, actual melodies is one step further. Now, the next thing you could try is a partner song. So I'm not going to get into this too much now, but a partner song is when you have two songs that work together at the same time. And there's a bunch of these partner songs. If you just um, type into Google partner songs, free partner songs, um, and you can get one team to sing song A, the other team to sing song B, and then you put it together and you get a third iteration, which is like song C, where both is going at the same time. Okay, so now let's talk about singing a hymn. And we're going to go over here to Amazing Grace. By the way, I've been teaching choirs for probably about 20 years. And if you want to learn more about choirs, you got to check out some of my other resources. One of my best programs ever is called Choir Essentials. 
and this teaches you how to recruit new choir members, teach harmony in greater detail than I can go into in this video, and also motivate your choir members so that they're super enthusiastic and they're just super awesome. And so you can check that out by clicking the link in the description below. Also, I have a free workshop which is all about teaching um, your congregation how to sing better. So there's little tricks of the trade in churches where you can actually get your congregation to sing more, sing louder, sing freely, and not be so nervous. And so in the free workshop, I go into all the details of getting your congregation to sing better. So also in the link, links in the description below, so check those out as well. So here we go, this is Amazing Grace, and this is in four parts. So the top note is S, soprano, second note is alto, then tenor, and then bass. Now, to do this with a choir, you're gonna need four groups of people that can really carry a tune well. The highest, obviously, is soprano, the lowest is bass, and then alto and tenor are in are the middle parts. So you wanna start this off really slowly. First thing you would do is get everybody to sing the melody, okay? So get everyone to sing the melody and make sure that everybody is matching pitch. So they're singing the same notes. If you have people that are floating around um, the notes and they're not really getting the melody, they're not gonna be able to sing in harmony. <laughs> At least they're not gonna be able to sing intentionally in harmony. Sometimes folks like that will actually sing in harmony, but it's completely unintentional. And so you get everybody to sing the melody, make sure they can hold the tune. Then what you do is you could add another part. So let's say you have a lot of women, okay? Let's say you have like um, eight women well, you've got to figure out who sings soprano higher and who sings alto. And then, after you get them all to sing the soprano line, you're gonna get the altos to sing the alto line. So you're gonna play them a B. Mm -hmm. Let's say this is a B, I'm not quite sure, but let's say it is. And you get them to sing, amazing grace, how sweet the sound and you teach them the alto part using a piano, okay? So then they learn the whole alto part, and then the trick is to put it together with the serrano part. So what you do is you play the low note first, and then you play the high note, and you say, okay, serranos and altos, let's sing our part together. Here we go, ready, go. And you play both of those parts together, and they sing both of those parts together at the same time. You should have some nice harmony. Now, if they're very beginning, beginning choir, this is going to take several weeks to get, to get them to the point where they can comfortably harmonize because what tends to happen is your singers are listening to each other and they're matching the pitch of the people around them, sometimes without even realizing it. So you might have some weaker singers that are trying that are singing the soprano section but they're trying to match the altos because they're standing next to an alto and this is why choir spacing can be so important sometimes you want your stronger singers to be the core of a section right in the middle of a section and sometimes you want your stronger singers to be on the edges of other sections so that they don't get as confused as some of the other folks in the section. So you can play around the seating with the seating as well. But for a brand new choir, this is the basic strategy. It's to go slowly and to slowly put things together. So after you um, get the soprano and alto part working together, then maybe you add the bass part. And so you get the bassist to sing Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. And you get them to sing that as well. And then you put it all together. Hopefully you're able to play that on piano. If not, maybe someone in your choir is able to play that. And then you go from there. So that's basically how you add harmony and you get your new choir singing in harmony. All right, hope this was helpful. If it was, stick around for other videos. Consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel as well. 
All right, hope to see you in another video. Peace.